I'm gonna take a 99 overall quarterback, put him on a group 5 team, and play his college career from his freshman season until his career ends to see what the career of a 99 overall quarterback looks like. This quarterback position has been an issue for NIU for the past couple years with Rocky Lombardi, so hopefully Brooks can fix it. And he already seems to be starting off on the right foot as he's looking to upset number 25 Iowa. As they're looking to score before halftime, Brooks back to throw, he's gonna launch it deep. He has Shamar Thornton wide open for a touchdown as Brooks and the Huskies would continue pouring it on number 25 Iowa in the fourth and Brooks would lead his team to a top 25 upset to start the season. Even though his team upset Iowa, Brooks is looking to put up some better stats this week. Somehow though, this week's game was a lot closer than last week's. I don't know why Brooks and the offense seemed to be struggling more this week, but they would come through and pick up a three point win. Noah was playing in front of his home crowd for the first time and hopefully this game would be a little bit easier as it was against FCS Midwest and Brooks was going to start off by showing off his wheels. This game ended up getting so much out of hand that Ethan Hampton, the backup quarterback, would enter in the fourth quarter as Brooks put on a show in front of the home crowd today. But now Brooks was on the road taking on a Big Ten opponent once again. It was late in the fourth quarter and with two and a half minutes to go, Brooks needed to get points on the board as he would drop back, scan, launch this one deep to Fabian McRae for a touchdown. And he now had 50 seconds and counting with no timeouts to try to complete a comeback against Purdue. Brooks would get them inside Purdue territory toy, drop back, he would find Shamar Thornton wide open who would take this into the end zone. And with his fabulous performance late in the fourth quarter, Brooks had led his Huskies to a comeback win against Purdue. Having a 99 overall quarterback really seems to make a difference as NIU was 4-0 headed into conference play. And if it was possible for Brooks and the Huskies to keep up this level of play, they could possibly find themselves winning the MAC this year. And it looked like they were off to a good start to that as they would easily defeat Kent State 34-3. This was the halfway point for Brooks and the Huskies season and they were still currently undefeated. And they were looking to make sure it stayed that way as they were back at home again, this time taking on Akron. This touchdown pass from Brooks would put Akron away for good this game, and their undefeated record was still intact. Things weren't looking great for Brooks and the Huskies as they were down 14 to nothing in the Central Michigan. And it was almost the fourth quarter with the only points the Huskies putting up being a defensive touchdown. This definitely has not been one of Brooks' better games for him so far this season, but now he had a chance to take the lead for his team for the first time today with this drive. He would get the offense inside the 10 and score the go-ahead touchdown and their defense was able to come up with a huge stop for them as Brooks would come out and take a knee and the Huskies would remain undefeated on the season. Noah and the Huskies were in yet another close one here in DeKelm and their defense keeps coming up clutch every single time they need them to this season so far. The domination on both sides of the ball had led them to a perfect 8-0 start to the season and they were finally ranked in the top 25. And with only four games left, the Huskies were hoping to get get ranked as high as they could, but that wouldn't happen with plays like this. Brooks and the Huskies couldn't be getting too far ahead of themselves though as they were barely beating Georgia Southern. Once again though, the defense would come up clutch for them and Brooks and the Huskies would barely escape with a victory. Brooks and the Huskies were now ranked number 19 in the nation, but this snowy weather in DeKalb was really making it hard for either team to move the ball at all today. Brooks would put the Cardinals away with one more touchdown though, and with only two games left to go in their season, the Huskies were still undefeated but would need to win this one against Toledo to make it to the MAC Championship. Thankfully, having a Heisman hopeful candidate on your team does make things a bit easier, as despite not having the greatest of stat lines this game, Brooks would still lead his team to a victory over Toledo. Things weren't looking good for Brooks and the Huskies in this final game of the season, though. The true freshman would stay poised in the pocket, though, and he would launch this one deep to Fabian McRae, who would come down with it for a touchdown, and the Huskies would finish a perfect 12-0. And Brooks and the Huskies found themselves in the MAC championship game. Brooks and the Huskies would strike first in this game, and thankfully this game wasn't quite as close as the regular season matchup was. One more touchdown pass from Brooks would do it for this game, as he had officially done it as a freshman. He had helped lead NIU to an undefeated season and a MAC championship. Not only would that win get the Huskies invited to the Fiesta Bowl, but Noah Brooks would also win the Heisman Award as a freshman. But even number eight UCF was not enough to stop this Mid-American Heisman winner, as he would lead the Huskies to a Fiesta Bowl victory. Noah would set two records his freshman season, including passing yards and passing touchdowns. As Noah Brooks would go 269 for 464, 3,725 yards, 39 touchdowns, and only four interceptions in his freshman season. It was the start of his sophomore season, and it was going to be hard for Brooks to top his freshman one. But it looked like he was off to a good start so far, as Brooks and the Huskies would open up this season with a victory. A win over an SEC opponent like the Razorbacks on the road would 
would be a great way to keep this season going. And Brooks would make that a reality here in the fourth quarter, as he and the Huskies would walk away with a double-digit victory over Arkansas. Two ACC wins to start the season would be huge for the Huskies, but that wouldn't happen for Brooks and the Huskies as we drop this one 34-31. Believe it or not, that was the first game Noah has lost in his collegiate career, and he definitely didn't want to make a habit of that. So in turn, he'd come out and destroy the Broncos this game. So they would start conference playoff undefeated, but we're in some trouble against Toledo here. Brooks had led a few game-winning drives last year as a freshman, so we'll see if he can do it here again as a sophomore. He had managed to get the offense down inside the 10 and into the end zone, and thankfully the defense would get a stop against Toledo here and force them to punt. With 10 seconds left, that gave Brooks maybe two chances at most to get us into field goal range, and this was risky, but they would run one more short play to pick up some extra yards, and the field goal unit for the Huskies would come out as the kick would be up, and it would be good, and Brooks had come up clutch in the fourth quarter once again to lead a comeback win. What an effort by the sophomore quarterback in front of his hometown fans. Central Michigan was proven to be a tough opponent at home as well, but Brooks would come out back onto the field and put them away with this pass right here. Things were looking great so far this year for the sophomore quarterback, as halfway through the season he had thrown for over 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns, and only three interceptions, and his team currently held control of their division. And even though this was a close one against Ball State, it would look like we'd stay on top of the division. It was week 10, and Noah still hadn't found himself on the Heisman list yet, so his chances of repeating as a Heisman winner wasn't looking great, and plays like this were definitely not helping his cause at all. And that interception almost cost the Huskies the game, but Appalachian State would come up a yard short, and thankfully they'd hold on for the victory. To make up for almost costing them that last game, Brooks wanted to put on a show here for the home fans in DeKalb as he looked like prime Johnny Manziel. But while he was trying to look like Johnny Manziel, he maybe made some throws that looked like prime Justin Fields on the Chicago Bears instead. Thankfully, his team was still holding on though, and he would complete this first down pass to secure the win, but we definitely have to see a decrease in these interception numbers the past few games. Theoretically, Eastern Michigan should be an easy team to beat this game. The conditions seemed to be affecting both teams early on, but Noah and the Huskies offense got on fire at the end of the game, and they would end up blowing out Eastern Michigan 37-3 behind Noah's impressive stat line. After that win, NIU finally found themselves ranked in the top 25, and even though Noah still wasn't on the Heisman watch this year, his team could still clinch their division with a win this week. Surprisingly, things weren't looking too good for us against the 5-5 Miami Redhawks, and on this play, things would not get any better, as Noah would end up going down with an injury. It turned out to be a strain back, and he was going to miss the rest of the season. But thankfully, backup quarterback Justin Lynch would finish the game off with a win for us. The last game of Noah's sophomore season would be against the Akron Zips, but unfortunately, he would not be playing, and backup quarterback Justin Lynch would get the job done for us. With an extra week of rest and recovery between the last game of the season and the conference championship, Noah Brooks was back in the lineup and ready to play. They would get the ball first and Noah would waste no time getting them into the end zone. And with under a minute to go, he would extend it to a three possession lead before halftime. And things just kept getting worse for the Bobcats defense as Brooks continued to dissect them on the first possession of the second half. Ohio wouldn't end up scoring until the fourth quarter, but Noah would have an answer right away as he'd show off his wheels and get into the end zone here. As backup quarterback Justin Lynch would get to see some action here too in the fourth quarter, as both quarterbacks worked together to get the team here this season, and ultimately help them win their second straight MAC championship in a row. And although Noah didn't even finish as a finalist for the Heisman Award this season, his team still made it to the Quick Lane Bowl against BYU. This was actually a really good game against the Cougars headed into the third, and look at this diving interception. I mean, I can't even be mad at that. I mean, look at what a great play this is. We would, however, though, be down one possession to BYU, and Brooks was trying to get the Huskies back into this game. And this play very well could decide the outcome of the game. Brooks rolling out on the run. He's going to throw it, and he completes it to Tristan Tuiz. What a throw by Brooks across his body, and now he's going right back to him, as Brooks would set the new career passing touchdown record for NIU. They would also decide to go for two for the win here, and they would get it. Three plays in a row to Tristan Tuiz. And now the Huskies defense just needed to keep BYU out of field goal range, as Javon Bird almost intercepts that pass. If only he held on to that, that could have won the game for us, but we still need a stop now. I don't know why BYU is running no huddle when they have all three timeouts left, but it's third and two, dropping back to throw. They're going deep to the end zone, and it's knocked incomplete. And they're going to try to kick a field goal here for the win, as the kick would be up 
and it would be good. And BYU would walk it off with that field goal. And you gotta wonder if this interception was the reason the Huskies lost the game. Definitely not the way Brooks wanted his sophomore season to end, but the sophomore quarterback still has next season. At the end of the season, Brooks would hold the record for most passing yards in a season and the most passing touchdowns in a career. And that's crazy because he's only played for two years and still has two more years of eligibility. Brooks actually finished the season second in the country in passing yards as he threw for 4,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions, which is a little more than we'd like to see. To start his junior season, Noah Brooks and the Huskies were ranked 24th in the country, and for the first time in his career, he was starting the season on the Heisman watch list. The season would be tough as they were starting out against number 10 Ohio State. Noah was doing his best to keep his team in the game, but interceptions like this weren't helping. And this play could decide the game as the pressure's gonna get to Brooks. That turnover on downs would allow Ohio State to go up by two possessions, and the Buckeyes would defeat the Huskies here in the first game of the season. That game would drop Noah out of the Heisman watch list and the Huskies out of the top 25. So it was crucial that they picked up a win here at home this week. And at this point, there was actually concern that the Huskies might lose this game against Wyoming. The loss against Ohio State was understandable, but this game should not be this close against Wyoming. Noah Brooks and the offense have not performed up to the expected level so far, and that would have to change if they want to be in BCS contention this season. Penalties had been killing the Huskies' offense all day, setting them up in long third down positions like this, and that's what had been giving Wyoming so many opportunities on offense today. Thankfully, Brooks and the Huskies would hold on for the win, but the tough non-conference schedule was not over yet. I'm hoping that our offense doesn't struggle this much in Matt conference play this season, because on paper, this is the best team Brooks has had around him his whole career. While it wasn't Brooks' best performance, a win was still a win. It was now time for conference play, and the Huskies found themselves back in the top 25. Noah in the offense seemed to be looking like themselves again as he was completing passes like this all day, and they would start conference play with a 35-7 victory here in DeKell. It felt good to get our first conference win after the slow start Noah and the Huskies had this year, but it would feel even better to take down our rivals Toledo on their home field. Things were not looking good for the Rockets here at the start of the second half, as Brooks would even set a new school record against his rivals this game. Once again, the backup Justin Lynch would come in for Brooks to finish out the game, as the Huskies would clobber the Rockets 48-7, all behind a five-touchdown performance from Noah. A quick break from action, though, saw them taking on Houston here in DeKalb, and a missed extra point point on their first touchdown might have caused some problems, but they managed to tie it right back up. Believe it or not, the kicker missed yet another extra point in the second quarter, but that pass to Trayvon Rudolph would give us the lead. This was a risky decision by Coach Hammock to go for it on fourth down, but it would pay off, as that first down would give the Huskies the opportunity to go up by two possessions, and that's exactly what they do, as they would hold on for the close victory over Houston here in DeKalb. Halfway through the season, the Huskies were ranked 18, but Noah still had not found himself back on the Heisman watch list. Despite that, Noah and the Huskies were looking to extend this winning streak against Central Michigan to six games. They seemed to be doing a pretty good job of holding Noah and this offense in check, but that wouldn't last forever. Maybe they would though, as it was only a seven point game with just over two and a half minutes to go. Noah wasn't gonna let that last though, as on the play action, he would roll out to the left, didn't see anything he liked, and he'd take it himself. That touchdown would secure the game for the Huskies, as their winning streak stayed alive. Next up was our other division rival, Ball State, and thankfully, we seemed to handle them here at home pretty easily. Brooks had a staggering five total touchdowns in his performance tonight, and that earned him an NCAA Player of the Week award. Unfortunately, he still wasn't anywhere on the Heisman watch list, and that was okay with him as long as his team continued winning. In fact, Noah didn't even play in the second half of this blowout against Eastern Michigan. In fact, Noah didn't see a lot of second half action in their last three games, because with the Huskies already having the Mac West division locked up, the coaching staff didn't want to play him more than needed and risk a potential injury to their star quarterback. Especially when you finish the season 11-1, ranked 9th, with a chance to play in a BCS Bowl at the end of the season. Noah found himself back on the Heisman watch list, but this lack of playing time dropped him down the list. But that didn't seem to bother the junior quarterback as he was playing in his third straight conference championship game. Noah and the Huskies could win their third straight Matt conference championship today, but it wasn't off to a great start. Both teams seem to be struggling, and this is the worst game Noah has played in his college career yet. He would manage to work them down into the red zone 
zone though as he would find George Gums and he would take this inside the five. And finally, the Huskies would get on the board for the first time today. This was only the third time the offense had gotten down past the 50 yard line this game. As headed into the fourth quarter, we were still tied. Things needed to desperately change here in the fourth quarter and they started off on the right foot as Miami just wouldn't seem to go away this game and Brooks would find Trey Erweiler here in the end zone. But of course, the defense let Miami get into the red zone and they had a potential game tying drive here. And with five seconds remaining, I don't know why they're not using their last time out. The game would come down to this play, pressure coming, and they're going to be stopped short. And NIU would manage to hold them off and Brooks and the Huskies would win their third straight match championship. And although Noah didn't win the Heisman Award this year, the Huskies still managed to finish the season ranked eighth and get an invite to the Capital One Orange Bowl against the Baylor Bears. This could possibly be Noah's last collegiate game with the Huskies, as Noah hadn't officially decided yet if he was going to enter his name into the NFL draft or not. Regardless of the decision he was going to make, his only focus right now was getting NIU a BCS Bowl win. And it looked like it was going to be a close one as the Huskies were down seven with less than a minute to go. And on a long third and 17, Brooks would drop back to throw and that would be intercepted. And they would end up losing yet another bowl game. Noah would set the new school career passing yards record and break his previous record for passing touchdowns in a season. He would finish his junior season 315 for 449, 4,256 yards, 44 touchdowns, and a career high 10 interceptions. Now it was time for the moment of truth to see what decision Brooks had come to. And to no one's surprise at all, he was declaring for the draft projected in the first round. And sure enough, Noah was drafted into the NFL with a first round pick. And after getting drafted, Brooks would end his collegiate career with a stat line of 11,989 yards, 114 touchdowns, and 24 interceptions.